Adam. Yeah. I, I think I've seen that man before. Maybe 15 years ago. I remember his face. Um, he's English. He speaks good Arabic. His name is Ismail Adam. And he claimed that after 16 years struggling to defend Islam, then eventually he found himself helpless and he decided to leave Islam because of uh, certain doubts that he couldn't sort it out. So what is the first uh, doubt? Oh, the doubt is that uh, Islam allows concubines to have sex with them. Wait a minute. Use a better word. Because when you say to have sex with it, with them, as if you're saying, in my law, it is not permissible. That's why I should be calling having sex. But that's to you. Because, as to us, it is Allah who makes things allowed, halal, and other things haram. And when Allah makes something halal, you should not say, well, this is having sex with me. I mean, you can't say that uh, my father decided to have sex with my mom. You can't say that because to you, it is something halal. Okay? Now, let's come to the case. We ask you, why did you leave Islam? Are you telling us that I left Islam because of this ayah? And he asks for the concubines. They are allowed for you, just like your wives are allowed to you. That's all. That's it. All right. You have to be in mind first that there are things that Islam considered to be halal, allowed, um, such as uh, some other things are not. Halal or not allowed, such as if a woman uh, fed me milk when I was young, okay, and I was taking five satisfying meals, five satisfying meals. Do you know that this this woman be becomes my mother in suckling? Well, they make they call her. I don't know in English, but in Arabic we call it Ummi min al -rada. My mother from milk, from from breastfeeding. She's my mother because of breastfeeding. Her daughter would be my sister. Her son would be my brother. I'm not allowed to marry the daughter of this woman anymore after five satisfying uh, me meals that I have taken from this woman. So therefore, I don't know what is your perspective about this. I don't care about your perspective. I don't know if you have heard of this or not. So it is Allah who makes things halal and make other things haram. And I don't think in Christianity, um, I don't think in Christianity, that they consider this. Uh, I have to repeat again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I was just told about a, about a man called uh, Ismail Adam. Um, I've seen this man before. He claimed that he stayed. He converted to Islam since 16 years and eventually he decided to leave it because uh, he wasn't convinced about one matter what is it that uh, uh, as for those concubines that we have taken from war we are allowed as he claims to have sex with them now using the word to have sex with them it indicates that 
it is already had been built in your mind that it is prohibited. That's why you say to have sex. You didn't say to to uh, to be my halal, my allowed kind of intercourse. It is halal. It is allowed. No. That's number one. Uh, number two. If this is the thing that uh, made you taking that decision that uh, you're leaving Islam, you have to bear in mind that every person who decides to leave Islam because of you giving him the encouragement to be to revert to non-Muslim belief, you'll be taking that sin of everyone that makes such similar decision. So you'll be lifting their iniquity. Shouldn't you be studying the issue, asking those who, who know when you do not know, dealing with the, with the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respectfully, as you do to British law, for example, there are things that you, do, you disagree with, you're gonna. You're not going to say at all. Um, well, I disagree with it. That that's why I'm going to give up obeying the British law. They put you in jail. Uh, you allow yourself to do that. Allah, the Creator of the British people, um, who may put you in hell, not in jail. Okay. So think about dealing with the law of Allah. At least in a similar way you deal with the British law. That you may disagree in something, but uh, you have to study to learn because the, the, the law of Allah is perfect. Since Allah is perfect, His religion is perfect. And it is the best for people. There is nothing called, you know, after experience, then God decided to change uh, because uh, He found out that this is not fit for people. No, 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 no. He's perfect, and his law is perfect, and I think you know that. All right. Um, what else? What else? What else? Yeah. So you're hastening to make that decision that I decided to give up Islam. Okay. Oh wait a minute! You have to tell us where you're gonna go. Where will you be going? Buddhism? Hinduism? Christianity, uh, Judaism, uh, Judaism has horrible texts about uh, about uh, killing people, children, everything, thing, burning the farms of those who do not submit to the chosen people of God. Okay, and when you attack a city take all their women for you those are gifts from God to you all my chosen people okay so they'll be for you as they say it in Arabic and I read it they'll be for you as slaves just for slavery there are something like uh, 20 long texts about how to take those people as slaves so if you want to return to Christianity well Christianity is uh, had, had uh, uh, consisted all of these texts texts or texts as a book of uh, religion as a book of faith so what are you gonna do now hmm? so you're not gonna become Christian you're not going to return to Christianity you're not going to be a Jew. What will you be? Uh, are you going to be an uh, atheist? So now you, be you become guided? After, you know, after worshipping God Almighty, suddenly, you, I don't think you're going to be, you decide, you're going to decide to be an uh, atheist. I don't think so. But if you did, mm, then how unwise person you are. So please give us the alternative. Don't be a destructor. Be constructor. Okay? 
So when you tell us that, you know, forget about this time. Or I give you the alternative. Give me something good. Give me what is better. Don't throw me like this in the depth of the sea and then say goodbye to me. So give us your experience. You must have experienced something other than Islam. After experiencing that Islam is not the true religion of God, give me, help me, save me. <laughs> I want to know where are you gonna go. I want to know where are you gonna go. So I have nothing to go with anywhere. Hmm. What else? All right. Let's come to the matter. Concubines are something bad. Well, to you and to your experience, because you look at the matter negatively. Okay? We look at it in a different way. Way. You have your own experience, history, about how people dealt with slaves uh, brutally. Okay? I understand that, but in Islam, it's not the case. Islam, as the Prophet say, feed them from what you feed yourself, that means the same, and clothe them from what you clothe yourself. And if you do not, uh, and don't, uh, uh, don't put burdens on them in things that they cannot bear. But if you order them to do something which is unbearable, then give them your hand and work with them. They are your brothers that Allah put under your authority. They are your brothers that Allah put under your authority. That is why one companion was seen having two similar horses. One for him, and one for his servant. And he was seen at the same time, wearing similar identical clothes. As a master, at least he should be seen with different clothes. Something better than the clothes that his servant has. So they said, oh Abul Yasar, how come you are wearing the same clothes of your servant? He said, yes. I heard the Prophet saying, Feed them from what you feed yourself and clothe them from what you clothe yourself. And uh, my brother, it is better for me that he takes from my money today rather than taking from my good deeds of the day of judgment. So I have no problem. Let him wear the same thing I have. It's better than. Uh, Taking from my good deeds of the day of the day. How beautiful is this? How great is that, Allah? And uh, in Islam, um, yes, it is true that there used to be slavery in Islam, but there used to be encouragement to, to free the slaves. Omar second leader of Islam after the Prophet's death. He used to be punishing those masters whom their servants say to them, we have enough money now, we're ready to free ourselves. So let's make a deal, as we call it in Arabic, mukataba. Writing, writing a deal between the servant and the master that I'm no, not servant anymore, you, you're not my, serve, my master anymore, I give you this money, and I free myself. <coughs> at, the, at the lifetime of the second caliph, if anyone declines, refuses, okay, to make such compromise or contract, Omar used to be punishing, hitting him, just like this. You have to accept it. There are many mistakes done in <coughs> while you're worshiping God, such as in pilgrimage, you made a mistake, free slave. In Ramadan, you went with your wife sexually while you're fasting, free slave. Always, 
Free slave, you made an oath in which you broke. Free slave. Always free slaves, free slaves in Islam. So Islam didn't say from the first time it is forbidden. But Islam um, improved it, enhanced it. First, your slave is your brother. Allah made him under your authority. Okay? As if just for you. Because you should be humble. You should not be arrogant. You should not be preferring yourself over those people. Because of the destiny of God Almighty, they're poor, they don't have what you have, that doesn't make you arrogantly dealing with them. So, number one, you have to treat them as your brothers. Omar used to be sitting down, eating with them, warning those who don't like to sit down and eat with their slaves, warning them, intimidating them that they should deserve punishment from God. In Islam, the, the second one who converted to Islam and, and the Muslims are always during 14 centuries they are always proud of this. That one, the first one converted to Islam was Abu Bakr. And the second one was Bilal. He was Afro, black. People used to ask the Prophet at the early time of his prophethood, Who with you? The Prophet said, I have one free person and one slave person. That's all. As for Bilal, his masters, they were angry with him because he converted. They put him, put him under the heat of the sun in Mecca and they started to torture him, beat him for the sake of returning to their religion. But he refused. He kept saying, Ahad and Ahad, Ahad and Ahad. Ahad and Ahad. Okay? Then Abu Bakr bought him. Then he became the symbolic, the symbolic person of Islam. He became the Mu'avin, the one who gives Adhan, declaration of the prayer. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Alright? Omar used to say, we used to say, our master freed our master. That means our master is Abu Bakr. He freed our master. He's calling Bilal master. Not only he's not slave anymore. No, but he became the master of Omar. The master of every Muslim. Islam had wiped away any concept of racism. Declaring that having slave and master is a test from Allah. <laughs> Whoever dealt wrongly or oppressed a slave, he may go to hell because of him. Let's remind you of this story. Aqba ibn Amr, he was beating his servant. The Prophet, was, as he was passing by, he saw him. He said to him, You should know Abu Mas'ud, that's his nickname. Remember, Abu Mas'ud, that Allah is more powerful against you over your power against your servant. Aqba ibn Amr said, Oh, that's Rasulullah, oh Messenger of Allah, I make you witness that he's free for the sake of God. The Prophet. That was not enough for the Prophet. He said to him, Do you know if you didn't do that, the fire would have been scorching you, touching you, if you didn't do that. Another man called Mu'ayyad bin Hakam al Sunni, that's in Sahih Muslim, he counted the sheep that his concubine was taking care of. And suddenly he found a missing one. So, 
He said, I am a human being, just like any other human beings. I got angry and I slapped and I slapped her on her face. And the Prophet said, whoever slapped his servant is only forgiveness from being punished is to free him. That means if you do not free your servant after hitting him, okay, you'll be punished by Allah. You deserve to be punished. Isn't this great? Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, Islam first uh, did not say from the first time it is prohibited, but Islam processed it gradually to get rid of it. That's why, for example, if today people say, agreed, that we don't want slavery, slavery anymore, Islam wouldn't say no, we disagree with that, it's okay. If people agreed on that, but why not? Since Islam was encouraging the freeing of all slaves, but if there is no resolution like this, Islam still makes it, make it obligatory, conditional any master that you should be taking care of your slave feeding him respecting him believing him to be equal like you and then step by step Islam was getting rid of this issue now we come to the to the point is it allowed uh, for a man if he got this woman as slave of war and to become concubine? Well, if those people repented, those women would be returned to them. Just like what happened with the people of, I think, I think of uh, Thaqif. They returned after a war between them and the Prophet. They decided all to become Muslims. They came to the Prophet. And their families, their wives, they were crying. They said, Oh Prophet, we came. We came to, to seek our uh, families back. And the Prophet said, He consulted the companions. He said, Those people had come to you repentant. So if you want, you have you have the option. You return those women, uh, and then when we get something, some other resources, some you know, some provision, we will comp we'll be compensating you. Okay. So they said, We have approved this. We have accepted it. Then Omar had one concubine. When he heard this from the Prophet, he said to his son, Oh my son, I have a concubine from that war. Take her and return her to the return her to the Prophet. And he said to the people, to those who uh, came as repentant, you have to accept one of the options. Either the money or your families. Then they said, We don't want the property, we don't want the money. We want our families to be back. Then the Prophet ordered their families to be back. Alright? Is this halal for uh, for the Muslims? Well, this is something that used to be um, uh, conventionally believed and practiced. It's not only by Muslims. It's by all people. All people in the world. Well, you should not be blaming the the Muslims at that time, when there was no United Nations, there was no resolution as to make it prohibited. So don't uh, don't use your court against them. Don't sue Muhammad and sue the Muslims who didn't have any kind of such resolution before. But all people used to be dealing with this. 
has uh, uh, has spoils of war. Okay, uh, and many Muslim women were taken as also concubines for the disbelievers. But for those women to come to the Muslims and to be concubines and then wives for, for example there's something you don't know that if a woman a concubine <coughs> had a child her child would be causing her freedom and she will be considered um walad, a mother of a child and this word this term mother mother of child it is indicative to the fact that this woman is becoming free And Islam also encouraged, Islam had encouraged um, uh, the, Muslim, the Muslims to free those concubines. The Prophet said, whoever has a concubine who freed her, then married her, and taught her, and well disciplined her, but she will be oh the prophet said there are two narrations one of them he will be given his reward twice double okay because first reward he freed her second reward he married her so he can see that Islam is encouraging the freeing of slaves well do we have this in Christianity? No way. Even in the New Testament, Paul says to the slaves, Oh slaves, be obedient to their to your masters, right? Be obedient to them. Uh, don't uh, become rebellious to them. That's all, Mr. Paul? That's all, Mr. Paul? What about the encouragement of freeing slaves? Nothing. It's only in Islam. Alright, uh, what else? Oh, the significant thing now though with Bilal is that the Prophet, he was given the ability of hearing some steps in paradise. This is a teaching from God Almighty. And uh, he was asking, uh, he saw, sorry, sorry. He heard the steppings of Bilal in paradise. Bilal. <laughs> then he called him, Oh Bilal, I heard your steppings in paradise. As if Allah wants me to, to know your significance. What is the significant, significant thing you do? So that made me hearing this, your steps in paradise. He said, Oh Prophet, it is nothing more than I take my ablution, okay, every time I lose my ablution, my wudu, I take another one, and every time I make another one, I perform two units, two rak'ah for that, he said, because of this, subhanallah, so that is significant, in Islam, we have been taught that this man, Bilal, radiallahu anhu, had become a very significant man of faith in Islam. So, Alhamdulillah, Islam um, uh, prohibited. When Islam did not prohibit, not prohibit slavery, Islam prohibited dealing uh, arrogantly. And ordered people to treat them equally and uh, um, warned those who may oppress them to be in hell now we come to the, the first point we began with is uh, is it allowed to have sex with this concubine yes oh I remember the doubt that uh, this is my Adam had brought is that Safiya who became the wife of the Prophet 
after her father, the leader of Judaism in Medina, had been killed in a war, and she was taken, her, his daughter was taken as a concubine, um, that she used to hate the Prophet Muhammad. Well, at the beginning time, maybe that, that, would, that would be natural, at the beginning time. Um, there are many people who used to be hating the Prophet extremely. And afterwards, the Prophet became more beloved to them than, than, than their own souls. Just like Hind said to him, just like Amr al As said to the Prophet, O oh, Prophet, um, or, and, uh, sorry, Thumama bin Athar, the, the three, many, they used to say, O oh, oh, Prophet, your face was the most hated face to me, and now your face is the most beloved face to me. That's it. So, um, so he was quoting this that uh, Sophia hated him. Wait a minute. Sophia hated him all the time, or maybe at the beginning time. If this is true, narration. I haven't checked it. Okay. Those women have been saved from hellfire. If they became concubines. Even becoming concubine is better for them to be concubines and then they become Muslims rather than being husband, wives for their husbands who will both enter hell by not following the true religion of Islam. So what I want to say is that when Islam says yes having concubines is another halal way of communicating, intercoursing with those women sexually, it is halal. So once it is halal, don't say, oh, you had sex with her. No. No, no, no. You should say, you should say, she became his halal. Because it is Allah who makes things halal and other things haram. I wonder, after you have been investigating Islam, Shouldn't you, before dealing with his laws, is it uh, is it correct one or is it not correct? Shouldn't you be studying Islam? Does it really belong to Allah or not? Or his religion is elsewhere? It seems you didn't. That's why any doubt will cause you to leave Islam. This is a problem in you, not in Islam. And if you are one person who decided to leave Islam, which makes me also believe that uh, there is an agenda because now you are bringing doubts just like uh, those enemies of Islam are bringing and you are uh, recruiting your uh, leaving of Islam by saying this man uh, threatened me and those people on my account in Twitter they, uh, they, uh, uh, they intimidated me they threatened to kill me etc they say that your blood is halal to be shared, etc., etc. So it seems that uh, this is an agenda. You're playing, you're pushing an agenda. And Allah knows best about your intention. But as for me, I would encourage those people who make such intimidations um, is to fear Allah and not to make those in the intimidations because uh, uh, in Islam, even if a person, if a person <clears throat> decided to leave Islam it is either being in a Muslim country or a non-Muslim country if he's in a non-Muslim country he shouldn't be um, uh, making that uh, intimidation or threatening uh, because of the lifetime of the Prophet when he was in Mecca there are many people who decided to leave Islam especially after his story of uh, ascension, um, when, he was, Exit ahead. when he was taken by uh, Jibreel to Jerusalem and he came back on one night and many people in Mecca they said, oh that is unbelievable, we can't believe that, oh that's too much for us, we're gonna leave us now. The Prophet did not order them to be killed, okay? In fact, none of the disbelievers in Mecca time None of the people of Mecca who used to be torturing the Prophet 
None of them have been killed. None of them have been touched. All the companions, and as one person, they all obeyed the Prophet's orders. That none, you should be patient. Be patient. Don't retaliate. Why you should be, be you should be patient? Because anything you do when Islam is weak in that uh, particular area, uh, anything you do, it may cause After the weakness yards, of Islam again. The exit, then go right on the roundabout, third exit. So it's not a matter of fearing or etc. No, no. Islam needs to be strong. And when you do these actions, you are weakening Islam. That's number one. Number Take two. The exit, then go right on the roundabout, number two, third exit. Is that uh, number two? Is that you shouldn't be the one who takes decisions by your hand? No, it is not you who take that decision. After 300 yards, go right on the roundabout, third exit. Even if you are in a non Muslim country, you shouldn't be doing such thing. You shouldn't. Go That's right a mistake. on the roundabout, third exit. Okay, that, because this is chaotic. Anyone can kill anyone. And when he's asked, why did he kill him? Oh, you know, he said, uh, um, he blasphemed against God. That's all? That's all? So anyone can make such claim. It is chaotic. So how much more, even if you're, uh, uh, when you are in a Muslim country, okay, when you are in a Muslim country, you should not be allowing yourself to do that. Uh, these Take things the should be taken by court these cases should be taken by court all right uh, yes there should be court and scholars will be will be uh, discussing issues this you know having dialogue with this person asking him why giving him break I wonder this time is not the reason of of uh, disorder even if this is the case like the man might be having some doubts so we should be trying to solve these doubts and he may return he may say well that makes sense astaghfirullah ask Allah's forgiveness so I'm not uh, I'm returning we should be helping people to go to Jannah to paradise not to push them kick them to be in hell it's not wise so if you're in a, in a non-muslim country you should not be uh, making it is uh, making a decision of killing a person by yourself otherwise you're responsible second if you are in a muslim country also you should not be the one to do it because this muslim country has an imam a leader okay and this is an authority in the hand of the leader of the Muslims, not in the hand of anyone. This is chaotic. <clears throat> um, as for me, uh, I, I hope that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide Ismail Adam. I wish that Allah guides him. And I wish to have a, a sitting with him so we can discuss these issues. Either he'll be convinced or we leave him to God Almighty. Allah knows about him. Is he playing an agenda or he is truthful? Uh, he doesn't understand the matter, etc. etc. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, may Allah guide him. And that was good uh, having uh, uh, spending the time while driving on something. Uh, something beneficial inshallah. Assalamu alaikum